In lab 10.2, we are going to look at read-write memory in BHDL. <clears throat> so what you will be doing is implementing a 32 by 8 read-write array, uh, except that when you have a read-write array, you need to know the ability to insert information into the memory in order to verify that you're actually storing information to it and then subsequently reading out that same information. So in this lab, what you're going to do is create the read-write array, which will be actually quite simple but the complexity comes in creating the circuitry around the array so that you can actually put information into it and read it back out. So as a result, you will also be creating an address counter with an enable, but the address counter is going to be controlled by a finite state machine that will facilitate writing to the memory array using the address counter and then reading from the memory array also again using the address counter. And then what we'll do is we'll take a video that'll be deliverable number one <clears throat> and then we'll be observing the read-write memory system using a logic analyzer. Okay, so here's the block diagram for the lab today. First of all, you'll see over here that you're going to have a component which is a 32 by 8 synchronous read write array. Uh, just like uh, we've seen in the textbook you're gonna have an 8-bit data in and 8-bit data out. You will have an address that comes in and it will have five address lines to access the 32-bit the 32 locations. It will have a clock since it's synchronous and you will have a control signal called write. When write is asserted information from data in will be stored to the array at the particular address that is on the address input on the rising edge of a clock. In order to get information into today's lab, what you need to do is wire eight switches. Uh, we'll use the slider switches on the DE0CV board, and we will drive those eight switches into the read-write memory array. Now, since we are using switch zero and one to drive our uh, clock divider, which, are, which is down here, we're going to use this precision clock divider like in all our other labs, and we will use switch 2 to 9 as the 8-bit inputs. Okay, So we want to also take switches 2 to 9 and also drive them to the red LEDs so we can see the input that we're trying to drive into the memory array. When we think about how we want to do this, we want the ability, since we're going to put in the switches pretty slow, we want the ability to have some sort of other signal that says, you know what, store that information and we are going to use key zero to store that information. So key zero is a press button on the FPGA board and when I press that I want to take the 8 bits of information from the slider switches and store it into the read write array. To do that some a lot of stuff has to happen. So first of all we need to make sure that the address counter is putting out the right address. Uh, we need to assert the right line and then once we're done writing we need to then increment the address counter in order to put it to the next address in memory. So we will accomplish that using a finite state machine. The finite state machine is going to have a path that will facilitate whenever key zero is pressed it will it enable the address counter in order to drive the address. It will then assert the right signal and then it will track to make sure that that only occurs for one clock cycle and then whatever was on the switches will then be written to the read write memory array and then the address counter will be disabled and then the right signal will be deasserted. So that's one of the paths of complexity within the finite state machine. Once we do this you can think about it as you're just going to put pieces of information on the switches press the button, change the switches, press the button, change the switches, press the button. And the information on the switches will go into the memory array at, ad once you start, it'll be at address zero. Then the next one will go at address one. The next one will go to address two. And those addresses are being incremented on an address counter process, but whether or not that increments is under the control of the finite state machine. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Except that we also want to make sure that the information was written to the read-write array properly. So we are going to have another piece of functionality that sits within the control finite state machine, and that's going to be called the read path. And what we want to do is when I press key 1, another press button on the FPGA board, I want to actually go back to address 0, and I want to, when I hold this down, I want to just take the information that's in the read-write array and I want to spit it out to the output. So I just want to start pumping out at address 0 what was the information, address 1 what was the information, address 2 what was the information, and I'd like to cycle through these addresses as long as I hold key 1 down. And then that will allow me to verify that whatever I wrote to the read-write array 
was actually in there. To see what's happening, let's go ahead and put the read write data out through our car decoders on hex 0 and 1. Let's put the input switches onto red LEDs so we'll be able to see instantaneously our switch values. And then what we want to do is let's put the 5 bit address value on hex 4 and hex 5. Again, since it's 5 bits, we'll put the lower 4 bits on hex 4. We'll put the upper bit concatenated with three zeros on hex 5. Go ahead and turn off hex 2 and hex 3 by driving once to it. That will facilitate the part one demo, which is observing what's going on on the read write memory array. Okay, we will also want to drive into the analog discovery so that we can do a logic analyzer measurement of this to make sure that it works at speed. So go ahead and take the read write data out and pump it to data zero to seven on the GPIO one header, wire that to the analog discovery, and then take the five bit address and wire that to D8 through D13 uh, on the GPIO one header wire to the analog discovery and then let's also get uh, our clock and our address enable and our write line okay so now once you wire that all up this is what it's going to look like you are going to have your address that sits over on the hex five or four and five you're going to have the data that has just been written to the memory array in hex format on hex zero and one and then you're going to have down here this is the inputs these are your switches and then you're going to have the red leds light up what is on the current switches you reset we'll be able to reset the address counter in the finite state machine but remember that doesn't affect what's in the memory array it only resets anything with a d flip flop you will have key zero which is how you insert whenever you press this whatever's on the switches will go into the memory array and then key one whenever you hold this down you will cycle through all of the addresses in the memory array and spit out its data okay if you think about how you want to do this the complexity really lies in the finite state machine the read write array is exactly what you've done on prior homeworks it's just going to be you know a simple signal array that you're going to have the ability to read and write to you're going to have an address counter process that also has an address enable so the address enable will be a synchronous enable which when asserted it will increment the finite state machine will take control of when this process is enabled and the finite state machine will handle the situation that make sure it only add or increments by one when it's enabled so all we have to do is have an enable line that says when this is enabled increment on the rising edge of our divided clock and then here comes the control state machine let's take a look at the, the state diagram of this we are gonna start and we are just gonna sit here and we are looking at key 0 and key 1 okay so if you neither key is pressed we're just gonna sit in the start state if key 0 is pressed this means information from the switches needs to be stored so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to a state which will first enable the address enable line that will tell the address counter process that it's ready to count on the next clock you will then go to the next state and what it's gonna do is disable the address enable that will allow you to, to only increment the address by one and then you're gonna write to that address so then you will assert right for one state and then you will come down to this state where both those signals are deasserted. It's critical that you have a state where you then wait for the key to be depressed. Okay, so this is going to be a situation where if somebody presses and holds and the, the clock is running really fast, what will happen is you'll cycle through this finite state machine over and over and over. But what we want to do is we only want it to go through this state once or this path once. So you press it. This will come down here, and then if the key is still pressed, it will stay in the state. Once it's released, then it will start over again. So that's how you write information to the array. And then here's how you read from it. What you will do is you will come over to here, and whenever the key one is pressed, all you're going to do is just enable the address enable. What this will do is it will just sit there and increment the address enable, and it, the read write memory array will simply spit out everything that is in its memory array. So if you hit reset, you'll set the address back to zero. You press key one, and it'll enable the address counter, and it will just sit there and go zero, one, two, three, up to its highest value, and all the information will come out. Okay, so that is part one. You'll take a video of that. Do it at uh, 10 hertz so that it's quite fast. And then go ahead and start with the patterns AA and EE. And then put a bunch of information in there. But I want to be able to see that you were able, able to actually get AA as your 
first your piece of information that was stored at zero one and then e e Now deliverable two and three are going to be taking a logic analyzer measurement of the read write system. Deliverable two is going to be a measurement of a store, so when you write to the array, and then or deliverable three will be when you read from it. So if you think about how we want to do a measurement when we write to it, we need a way, you know, you write very slowly, okay, you're, you're hitting the button. Uh, with your finger, which is extremely slow relative to how fast a computer runs. And so what we want to do is it would be nice to have the measurement basically display information every time we hit the button. So the way that you do that is you do it with a trigger. So we're going to set up the logic analyzer to do a trigger condition that when we arm it, it will sit there and wait. It won't actually be, it'll be looking for information, but it won't display it until it actually sees a particular condition. And the condition that we're going to do is we're going to set up the trigger to be rising edge of address enabled and so and if we leave everything else as a don't care what will happen is that it will will run the the analog discovery logic analyzer and then it will as soon as we hit the button information will start going into the memory array and it will trigger the logic analyzer so it's critical that you hook up the signals the way that we did uh, that are shown in the block diagram and then you're going to launch the logic analyzer tool of the analog discovery <clears throat> and then these are the settings that are critical okay the first one is you want this the trigger to be rising edge of address enable and you got to set up your your signals here so if you look at the signals you're going to set up you, you want clock div and name them this in the logic in the uh, signal setup of the logic analyzer name it clock Clock div, name it address enable, name it write, name the address bus address, and name the read write data out this name. So name them exactly as you have in your VHDL. Okay? And then you're going to go in and set the trigger to be just for address enable and then rising edge, and leave everything else triggering as a don't care, so an X. Change the buffer to 100, you're going to do run repeat, repeated, and then you're going to do mode as normal. This is the big one. So normal tells it that it's going to, when you run it, it's going to wait for the trigger. If you do auto, auto it won't trigger correctly. And then as your source is digital, and put your position, we're going to be running this uh, at a certain frequency. We're going to run it at 1 kilohertz. So go ahead and set the position to be 0.02 seconds and then the base to be 5 milliseconds per division. And that will correspond to having, you know, I don't know, 50 or 60 clock cycles on the screen. Then when you're ready to go, you're going to change the clock frequency of the FPGA to be 1 kilohertz because we want this to be to collect a lot of data uh, each time you press the button. <clears throat> and so change switch 1 and 2 to accordingly to get one kilohertz. And now here's what you want to do. Go ahead and put AA on the switches. Okay. And then when you hit run on the logic analyzer, it will sit there and wait. And then what you're going to do is hit the button uh, and then it'll trigger. Okay. So you will see this type of information. Now the Time per division is why is what you set to get all of this information across so you get this many clock cycles. But more importantly, 
uh, what you're going to see is address enable is right here. This is your trigger condition. So you'll notice that over here you see the rising edge. You can double click on that and set it there or you can set it in the settings trigger. But we shifted it over 0.02. That's what this setting was right here. So that got it away from the left axis. But if you see this, what, the reason that this is so important is because you actually see clock cycle by clock cycle what is happening in your finite state machine when you write. So notice that the clock is always running. But you press this button, that then tells the finite state machine to go to a state to assert address enable. That allowed the address counter to be incremented, but it didn't increment until the subsequent clock edge because you didn't, you know, the process for the address counter didn't see that assertion until the following clock cycle. And then also, then you go into the finite state machine state where you assert the write, and then you'll notice that read write data out did not come out until here. So the information actually went into memory right here in this state right here, but we're not tracking it. We're not actually looking at what's on there other than on the red LEDs. <clears throat> so then after it gets in there, it will spit out a clock cycle later. Okay. So now what's cool about this is that every time you hit the key zero, the logic analyzer will trigger. So don't stop the logic analyzer. You can hit single each time to get it to go. So hit single, 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 it'll wait, hit the button, it goes. Uh, so if you change it now to EE and hit the button, it will then take another measurement and you'll see that you actually now have EE stored on there. Okay. So deliverable number two is go ahead and store BB to address location 03. <laughs> now, if you get caught up and you're like, you keep hitting the button and you're like at address F or something like that, you can hit, remember, you can hit the reset button and that'll reset the address counter, but then you just got to make sure that you hit the first button, it'll store to zero, second button will store to one, second, hit it again, or I mean, key zeros. Every time you hit it, it'll increment the address counter. So get up to zero three, and the deliverable for number two here is store BB to address zero three. Okay, then what the deliverable number three is is going to be you're going to do a logic analyzer measurement of a read. <clears throat> okay, now this one is uh, more telling because when you hit the button key one and hold it down, it'll spit information out. So we still want to run this at one kilohertz so that we can get a whole bunch of information, but uh, we want to put all of it on one screen at one time. So if you hit the reset button, you're going to take uh, the address counter back to zero. All the information that is in uh, memory will be spit out, and that's going to really depend on what you've been putting into it. So you should fill it up with some information that you know, okay? And then fill it as much as you possibly can. You know, fill the whole thing up, hit key zero a whole bunch of times, put in patterns that you might see, put a 261, put a EE261, put a EE367, put a DEAD or something like that. Put information that you know you put in there so that when you read it out, you know it's right. And then, then when you hit that key one and hold it down, it will see this thing stream out. And notice that the trigger will be fine. The trigger is still a rising edge of address enable. So as long as you hit the reset button and then you hold down key one, address enable will go up and it'll just free run and it'll just spit all its information out and you'll see all of this on the screen. Okay, that is going to be deliverable number three. So take a screenshot of your read measurement and then finally uh, upload your top.bhd for deliverable number four and that is lab 10.2.